indoor trainers today. So my pick, now look, I'm not gonna go on about the brands or the rest of it. Well, I will throw a couple of brand names in, but I'm not, this isn't to sort of say which one to buy, it's the type. Now, lots of different types of indoor trainers. And I was asked if I would give my opinion on the best sort of indoor trainer to buy. So, now, I, there are all sorts. So we start off with, you got the magnetic ones. They're the base model, so bottom of the range, basically. Dirt cheap, pick them up for next to nothing. Uh, about 99 bucks. Does the job, yeah? Then you've got the Fluid Trainers, which is the one I've got. I've got the Jet Black Z1 Fluid Pro. Um, and then you go to the Direct Drive Trainers. That's where you take the back wheel off, yeah? And you get them right up in price. And then you've got things like the Wahoo Kickers. Now, the Wahoo Kickers and all that sort of technology, they run the same thing, the Direct Drive, where you take the wheel off and hook your chain up to, it's got the um, the rear cassette built into the trainer. Um, so getting back to the first one, look, the magnetic one is basic as, I've had one, did the job just fine. Yeah? A problem with it is, they're noisy. Um, used to sound like a bloody jet engine taking off, so. I was kicked out into the garage to do all my trainer sessions. So I wanted to do the trainer sessions inside, so then I went to the Fluid, which is the Jet Black one that I've got. And that was about 300 bucks. Um, up from there, as I say, you're going into the drive ones. And look, you're going anything from around $1,200 up. Now, my issue was, do I really need to spend upwards of $300 on an indoor trainer? Now, am I actually going to get a better workout? Now, look, this is going to be controversial. A lot of you are going to come on here and go, no, nah, mate, you don't know what you're talking about. I've got a Wahoo kicker. It's the best, and you get a much better workout. Now, of course, everyone's going to defend what they've got because you've just spent $1,500 buying it. Right? But my question is do you really need it and look for the majority of us like me weekend warriors all that doing the odd event no you don't a fluid trainer is all you need now one of the reasons i went with the fluid one as well is the main reason was it's quiet okay um i've got a power meter so i run a stages power meter so when i'm on the trainer all my training is to power anyway so it makes no odds to me i mean the, the yahoo kicker wahoo kickers they give you a more realistic um ride when you're on things like zwift because it will imitate the reality of climbing hills um but again my argument with that is do you really need it if you've got a power meter I'm working to power anyway, and power is power. If I'm pushing out 300 watts, I'm pushing out 300 watts. End of story. So, the short of it is, to me, if you've got loads of money, you don't care, um, and you just want the latest, because it's got all the gizmos and all the rest of it, then yeah, you go up in price and you pay your, you know, plus $500 for a trainer. If you want something that'll do the job, or go the distance, give you a workout, then just get a fluid. Get one of the fluid ones, you can pick them up, 250 bucks to $400 maybe. That's new. And um, you'll have yourself a, a good trainer that you can do some good workouts with. Um, and do you need the power meter on it? Look, if you're on Zwift, you can use their virtual power. It's pretty good. Um, it's not accurate, it is out by probably about 30 watts, um, but you can still use it and get away with it and get a rough idea. But if you really want accurate power, best way to go is on 
um, the sticky power meter on and that is my opinion on indoor trainers so you don't have to go to the top of the range you don't need to get the latest thing with all the gizmos on it it really just isn't necessary unless you just want it if you want it go for it you know if it's your dream to have a two thousand dollar indoor trainer sat in your house go for it the reality is unless you're a professional that's going to be on it pretty much all the time i wouldn't waste your money um because the real reality is most people like us uh weekend warriors you know get indoor trainers it's a novelty to start with um, and then that sort of gets shoved into the corner I mean mine doesn't I do use mine but um, you know if you do get bored of it or it's a little bit you know I can't be asked with the indoor trainer today you don't mind sticking two or three hundred bucks into the corner do you for a few months until you decide to use it again but when you're sticking two grand into the corner until you decide to use it again hurts a little bit more so anyway that's my pick the magnetic ones the cheap cheap ones definitely you can use them they'll give you just as good a workout but the fluid ones are much nicer to train on because they're a lot quieter so that is my pick um, the fluid ones for definite and now climb this little hill I'm gonna go and enjoy my ride and nothing beats getting out on the bike for real and going and climbing some hills, doing 50k's, something like that. That's the best way to train. But I suggest either way, whether you're on your indoor trainer or going out for a ride, I suggest you get your gear on and you get out there and do it and get bloody strong. Come on, get out there. Let's give it a push, eh? Look at that weather. Hey, we're back to good old Bris Vegas, beautiful weather. We've had a week of rain. Now the sun's back out. Unfortunately today for me is going to be a short ride, about 50 k's because I'm working. My lovely wife's going to book me some jobs in. So, got to start work at 10 o'clock, so it's about a quarter to six now. 25 to 6, get this ride out of the way, have a quick coffee, get ready, try and do a bit of work.